What is up, Mr. Spider-Man Spectator Spider-Man? You can call me Mr. Spider-Man fan or Mr. Tom Holland fan because it's time for me to do a review on the movie Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, this is uh, a, an installment in the Phase 3 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is the first in the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy. It is the first Spider-Man solo film in which Tom Holland plays Spider-Man. It was released in 2017. When I was a sophomore in high school, and I remember like it was this way, it was five years ago at this time of this recording. So as you can see right here, there is Tom, and I grew up with Spider-Man a lot, it's, it, even Iron Man as well. As you can see, there's, there's Spider-Man, there's Iron Man, and there's the Avengers Tower, which used to be Stark Tower in the background of the city, New York City. Five stars. Best Spider-Man ever, quote from Bill Zwecker from Chicago Sun-Times, and... Sean Edwards from Fox TV gives it the 5 out of 5 stars, which I don't blame him for. Even though there are other Spider-Man movies I think are slightly better, but, you know, this is a good one. So, here's the back. Here's the side. And here's the inside right here. Here's the disc. Look at this little spidey face. So it's about a superhero named, it's about a, guy, a teenager named Peter Parker, he, who's Spider-Man, and he's being trained by Tony Stark to become an Avenger, and apparently he happens to find out that there's a scheme, he happens to find out that these, this gang led by a villain known as Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, who is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, by the way, is thwarting, uh, planning to sell technology from the aliens from Loki's army, Loki's army war army from the original Avengers movie from 2012 uh, like for illegal money like like a black market kind of thing and he's using the technology to make his own wings and tech weapons make weapons and you know it's like a great it's for profit and it's you know it's it's dangerous for the world so cuz cuz imagine if the, the, the alien technology, which is almost unstoppable technology, got into the wrong hands, right? So it's up to Spider-Man to defeat them. And it's really fun. It, you know, it shows Peter Parker in high school, which reminds me of, Peter Russell, which reminds me of my high school time. See, I like how this movie came out when I was in high school because, you know, it's set during Peter Parker's times in high school. Like, you see him interacting with different kids. You see him with a best friend called Ned, and he has a love interest named Liz, who has an interesting plot twist later in the movie. You'll, you'll see what I mean by that. He has his Aunt May, who's his mentor. I mean, his guardian, but his real mentor is Tony Stark, and his secondary mentor is Happy Hogan. And, like, it's really interesting. Like, apparently in this movie, unlike in the comics, Spider-Man's costume has, like, an artificial intelligence system, like Jarvis, but it's, it's called Karen in this movie. Like, he gives the name Karen. And, fun fact, she is voiced by... Uh, Jennifer Connelly, the wife of actor Paul Bettany, who played Vision and voiced Jarvis in the MCU. Uh, and, and so, yeah, that's really cool. And apparently Jennifer Connelly has not made an, a voice cameo since this movie or Avengers Infinity War. And I feel like she could have stayed for a few more installments. But yeah, so yeah, Spider-Man has, like, his guide, his map. He's, like, in a training wheel mode in this movie. And that's one of the things I like about the Spider-Man, because it's really unique that he has, like, Stark technology involved with his suit. Unlike, unlike the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield incarnation versions. I personally enjoy this movie. I personally enjoy the other Spider-Man, but this one is very unique. It's like, it's like an upgrade. It's, like, more modern Spider-Man. I mean, he is more modern compared to the time period, you know, because Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, the original one, is set in 2002. The first Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie is set in 2012, which is 10 years ago at the time of recording, and I remember seeing that movie in theaters like it was yesterday. And this Spider-Man movie is set in 2016 or 2017-ish. I mean, it takes place right after Civil War, so I would say 2016, but, you know, it's, you know, more recent compared to Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. And, you know, it's, it's, this movie's half a decade old, and it feels like yesterday. It's kind of crazy how time flies. You know, soon before I know it, it's going to be 10 years since this movie came out. I'm going to be like, what? what the hell? 
So, I mean, I, like, um, I would rank it, like, 5 out of 5, or 10 out of 10, or 9 out of 10, or, like, <laughs> um, I like Tom Holland's portrayal in this movie. It's really good. He, he really killed it, Spider-Man. Uh, Aunt May, oh, yeah, the youngest Aunt May compared to other uh, versions out there, and she, she killed it as well. She, she was really like, good, really good. Tony Stark, mental role, oh, yeah, fit very well. Uh, Adrian Toomes, the vulture, played by Michael, Michael Keaton, oh, of course he did great. If he could be a good Batman, he could be a good vulture, uh, vulture. ever hear that? Hey, remember what Aaron Eckhart's character, Harvey Dent, aka Two-Face, said in The Dark Knight in 2008? Either you die a hero, either, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And Michael Keaton must probably think about that phrase sometimes, since he was Batman. <laughs> and, you know, the Dark Knight was a Batman movie, but, you know, like... Uh, I remember when they first announced Michael Keaton was playing Vulture. Like, well, as soon as they rumored, it was rumored that Vulture would be the villain, I was like, yep, it's going to be Vulture. Because, you know, they were saying they wanted it to be a villain who has not been in a Spider-Man movie before as a way to start off fresh. And, you know, I could see, I could see the looks right away why Michael Keaton would be <sighs> Vulture. So I was like, yep, he's Vulture. And I remember he briefly dropped out because he didn't want to do a content that, content and I was upset. And then I found out he, he, cha he regretted it just in time and he changed his mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to be Vulture after all. <laughs> You know, I was so excited when this movie was coming. I was like, oh my god, a Spider-Man solo movie set in the MCU. Fun Spider-Man adventure. Right? They're going to see these merchandise at Disney World. Because, you know, and you see Marvel Cinematic Universe is owned by Disney Productions. Stu Mission Studios. And, like, you know, I grew up with Spider-Man. It pays tribute to other Spider-Man as well. There's just spider man And, you know, I, I'm going to keep being a fan of Spider-Man. I, uh, the storyline's good, the symbolism's good, the teaser, the setup for the other future installments and sequels is really good, and yeah, I really enjoy it, and Tom Holland, you know, he's like a kid, Spider-Man's like a kid, and that's the kind of Spider-Man you envision, and that, and Stanley was like that too, oh yeah, speaking of Stanley, Stanley's cameo, 10 out of 10, baby, Excelsior. So yeah, anyhow, yeah, that was the video of my review for Spider-Man Homecoming, I mean, I'll probably make a part two of this. Rate, favorite, subscribe, even favorite, talk to people later. Comment down below, who's your favorite Spider-Man, what's your favorite Spider-Man movie? And, you know, we'll be doing a review on other Spider-Man movies too. Rate, favorite, subscribe, even comment, and talk to people later. Peace.